Every week, I see a lot of patients complaining of shoulder pain, and they are usually referred to me by other providers, either orthopedics or other pain providers or their primary care provider, because they are still having shoulder pain despite having tried treatments, including injections. And what I have found over the years is essentially that uh, shoulder pain tends to be misdiagnosed. So patients might receive a given treatment or a given injection, but for the wrong pain generator within the shoulder. So it's important to understand what are the most common pain generators in the shoulder, and this is what the video will be about. Welcome back to the channel. My name is Dr. Sater. I am a double boarded neurologist and pain doctor. All right, so in this video, I will be discussing the top three most common causes of shoulder pain that I see in my clinic. Okay, so let's start with the first one. The most common type of shoulder pain that I see is what we call rotator cuff syndrome. And what's the rotator cuff? So rotator cuff essentially is the muscles around the shoulder joint that stabilize it and also allow it to move. So these are also known as the shoulder girdle muscles. And examples of those muscles are supraspinatus, infraspinatus, and other muscles of that sort. Now, when you have injury to one of these muscles, which can happen if you tear one of the tendons or if you have inflammation in one of the tendons, then basically the pain in your shoulder will be mostly on active range of motion. So if you are actually moving the shoulder, so either on forward flexion or if you are doing some kind of internal rotation or external rotation, or if you are abducting it. So that's what we call abduction of the shoulder. So when you're trying to do those, and especially if you're trying to lift it up all the way up above your head, then that tends to be very classic for supraspinatus tears. And if you have rotator cuff injury, then basically the pain will be in your shoulder. It will limit your range of motion a lot of times. So compared to your other shoulder, you're gonna find that you're limited on that side. And it tends to be on active uh, movement. So if you're not moving it, a lot of times you're not gonna be in pain, which differentiates it from other types of shoulder pain. Now, for this kind of pain, the treatment is an injection in the bursa. So what we call the subacromial bursa, which is essentially where the, the muscles of the rotator cuff are swimming. And that would be the target for that kind of pain. The second most common type of shoulder pain that I see is what we call adhesive capsulitis. So that is frozen shoulder. And this kind of pain, because of the inflammation that's happening in the capsule, patients usually wake up with pain and they also have pain at rest. So on passive range of motion, they're gonna have pain and when they are not doing anything, just because of what we call gelling. So the gelling phenomenon is essentially when you have increased pain after periods of inactivity for that joint. So the pain in adhesive capsulitis or frozen shoulder will be both at rest and during movement. And the injection for it is actually in the joint itself. So the injection for this is gonna be the glenohumeral joint, uh, which is the shoulder proper, as opposed to the bursa, which was the target, if you remember, for the rotator cuff that we discussed earlier. Now, people who have had a prior stroke or have Parkinson's disease, for example, are definitely prone to having frozen shoulder. All right, and now the third type of shoulder pain that I see is uh, caused by osteoarthritis. So arthritis inside the either the glenohumeral joint or the AC joint, which is really in this spot right here, connecting the collarbone to the shoulder. When your pain is caused by osteoarthritis in the shoulder joint or in the AC joint, the injection should be in the joint itself. So either the glenohumeral joint or the AC joint. That kind of cortisone shot can actually help. Okay, so these are the three most common types of shoulder pain that I see. Now, the treatment for shoulder pain in general is also a spectrum, just like treatment for a lot of other pain conditions. So initially you have things like physical therapy, massages, acupuncture, that's more the, you know, the conservative treatment. And then you have medical treatment with anti-inflammatories often. So you can try things like Voltaren gel. So that's diclofenac gel. It's an NSAID, an anti-inflammatory, and it's topical. So less of a risk for systemic side effects, but that definitely can be a reasonable option to start with. And so rubbing that gel around the joint can potentially help. However, oral NSAIDs can also help. Sometimes I would give a two-week course of meloxicam, for example. This is a good NSAID that has good penetration into, uh, into joints in general, and that can be a good option, but not sustainable. So if you're, you know, if you have pain every single day for a year, you can't really be taking meloxicam every single day. Otherwise, it will give you ulcers and blood pressure issues and other side effects. And then the third category would be interventional therapy. So that's injections, and that can include cortisone injections. So steroid shots that I mentioned before, that can include nerve blocks or ablations, 
like suprascapular nerve locks. Those can sometimes help with shoulder. And then you have other types of injections, like PRP injections and gel injections. And then finally, you have uh, surgery. So things like rotator cuff repairs and other surgeries that can potentially help in a more definitive way. All right, I hope you found this video useful. Let me know in the comments below what you think is causing your shoulder pain. And don't forget to check out the other videos on back pain and headaches that I have on the channel.